Let's, let's get into this. Last night, AFC North battle for the ages. The Ravens had the Bengals on the ropes sans Lamar Jackson, which was crazy. But since he somehow found a way to survive and advance with what is uh, an infamous and unforgettable 24-17 to wildcard weekend win, the biggest difference being this third and goal. Guys, what happened here with Logan Wilson? I was on the couch jumping up and down. He knocks the ball away from Tyler Huntley on his dive into the end zone. And he's still running. The Cincy kid, Sam Hubbard, a hero, taking it 98 yards. Oh, my gosh. Mark Andrews tried so hard. Game-winning score. The longest game-winning score in NFL playoff history. This play is going to be so famous. This play needs a whiskey sponsorship. It needs a billboard. It needs CAA to represent it. Uh, this play needs a TikTok trending dance. It's the next big thing. It will live on in infamy. Uh, and it's a legend already. So we'll get into that and the many layers of it later on in the show. And shout out to Von Bell, with whom, without this play, on the play before this happened, it would not have gone down the way that it did. And the Bengals might be home with the Ravens going up to Buffalo. Now, Zach Taylor, um, after the game, he's at a local bar. We'll show you that in a bit. I imagine, I don't know this, but I imagine there were some cigars, dancing going on in the locker room. But the truth is the Bengals, they have a lot of work to do. They already had a raw deal. The Bengals had no shot at the one seed. They win their division but almost didn't get to play at home. Now they have to go to Buffalo instead of a coin flip or a neutral site, which seems fair, and the other teams got, at least were considered, uh, as far as tops in the AFC, Ravens included. They are on the road now. They're in their smoking cigars and packing up. It was already a tough road. Waze wasn't working. You're, you're turning signals out. You, you, know, you can't figure out where to go. You're printing out seven pages of MapQuest to try to figure out how to get to Buffalo, and the road just got even harder after losing left tackle Jonah Williams last night. Ruled out with a knee injury, and then you know we all saw the camera follow him into the locker room, but there's also reports that he was on crutches after the game. So if things are as bad as they are feared to be, and they seem pretty bad, the Bengals are going to be down three of their starting five offensive linemen when they head to Buffalo. This offensive line that at the point this year through this winning stretch was better than what it was last year on their road to a Super Bowl against the Rams. And Joe Burrow, I got to love him, but un I'm not, not unconcerned, but steps up for his guys, isn't flinching, and here he is. By the way, they asked him like one question, and they got right away to what about the offensive line, and here's Joe. We have a lot of faith in, in those guys. You know, Max stepped up today, Akeem stepped up today, and then Jackson stepped up when he got his got in there, you know, after Jonah got hurt. So we have a lot of faith in those guys. They're gonna get their job done. Joe has to be physically hurting after this game. He got hit around so much. Still doesn't flinch, supports his guys. I commend it, but this is going to be rough even without Von Miller up in Buffalo. So my question is. Andrew Whitworth, what time exactly are you getting to Cincinnati? Do you need someone to pick you up? I know a few people in the area that might want to help. Uh, I right away went to Andrew Whitworth's timeline and said, what, what's going on here? And he responded to Dan Orlovsky in talking about the O-line, saying the biggest question mark to their postseason success just got bigger, not good. Hmm. If only there was a simple Super Bowl winning solution to this newfound problem. Andrew! Get to Cincinnati. It is not a cute storyline, by the way. The, the, you know, the, the bat signal is lit atop the PNC building there in downtown Cincinnati. Zach Taylor comes from the McVeigh tree. Now, I'm no former player like Dan Orlovsky, and I'm just a fan here, but I'm guessing that means the vocab book, the terminology, the glossary might be similar enough to light this sucker. Like, like let's light this candle. You, Andrew, I'm talking to you, and Zach Taylor, we're together uh, in LA, so I found you a flight. Delta 442. We looked, there's one first class seat available, just one. This is Kismet 4A. I don't know if we gotta do the GoFund. I'll go fund the whole thing. I will go fund the entire thing. It departs today. Let me tell you, it is not easy to find a direct flight. They don't exist from LA to Cincinnati. That's why I wasn't at that game last night. I would be. That there is a flight available, that there's one seat left for you, big fella. Let's get you. Let's get you to Cincinnati. And in all seriousness, Burrow can say what he wants. He was sacked four times. He was hit eight times. 
run game depleted. They averaged 2.8 yards per carry on the ground. Basham and Rousseau are no picnic. So while I don't lose faith, of course, and while, while I think we can do this, and I think Buffalo has the issues of their own, uh, I just, I, you're welcome. I solved the problem. Whitworth, Delta, 442, seat 4A, to Cincinnati. All right, let's move to the afternoon slate here. God, there's so much fun games to get into. And we still have one tonight. Uh, and I'm excited to preview that. Are we going to see Brady like the last time as a Buccaneer, last time ever? Are they losing to the Cowboys? Like, what? Are the Cowboys going to get into this thing? What does it mean for Sean Payton and Mike McCarthy? Okay, well, let's get into the Giants. So the Giants, they go into Minnesota. And if you didn't see this coming, I don't know what you've been watching all year because it just seemed like it was going to happen. Upset City turned into Minneapolis. And it was the Vikings that fall 31-24. to The Giants... Things are so fun. They earned their first playoff spot since knocking off the Patriots in Super Bowl 46. That was 11 years ago. I walked into the studio here at 6 in the morning. How about them Giants? I'm here, and yes, from everybody here, Daniel Jones. And this cannot be understated. He was brilliant. This was his first career playoff start. He threw for over 300 yards. He threw for two touchdowns. He added 78 on the ground. And most importantly, how many times did he turn the ball over? Zero! Not once! Okay, so he was so sharp from the first snap of the game, guys, all the way through the game-winning drive. And we talked about it on the show last week, and I'm glad we did. This group of unheralded receivers stepped it up. Isaiah Hodgins, I said welcome to the conversation. And how? In the playoffs, big stage, 105 and a score. Darius Slayton, he had 88 yards, and of course he could have had more. There was that, you know, that drop, and luckily, gosh... I'm so glad they didn't come back to, to bite them uh, in the end of this game. But I was impressed with the whole team. They seemed to step it up. The game progressed. You uh, pay your coaches. Write, write the check. Get the big guys in there. The experienced guys, the good ones, they turn th- teams around in a hurry. And here's Coach Dable after the game echoing, not the sentiment about getting paid, but echoing the sentiment of in team effort after a win. Consistency, passion, toughness. And most importantly, you made the plays you needed to make to win the game, okay? Everybody, everybody in this room. But I am proud of you. I am proud of everybody in this room. But that's what it takes. What does it take? Everybody. Let's come back ready to work. Guys on three, one, two, three, guys! There was a lot, I was in New York when the signing happened. There was a lot of, what's Josh Allen gonna look like without Dable, but how good is Dable really? Is he the answer? No one was giving, I mean, he was gonna be an improvement, of course, in what they've had, but no one was really giving this team a chance to sniff a playoff spot when he took the job. Everybody was talking about a slow, steady three-year plan, right? Get to rebuild, it's whatever. And, you know, I was at a Good Morning Football and said, Giants fans, this is a great move. We need to preach patience. Daniel Jones, probably not the guy. You got to give Dable time here. I mean, this is insane what's going on. No matter what happens in Philly next week, and it's not going to be easy, this season has been an incredible success, resoundingly so. And it's clear the Giants landed themselves one of the best coaches in the league. So I'll just say this. Ride it out. Enjoy it. New York, this one's for you. Just enjoy it. That's all i got to say. And on the Vikings side, more heartbreak for a fan base that I'm telling you, and I've said this, people don't, people like to argue, man, who's the most tortured fan base? It's the Vikings. Look at what's going on here. 31 playoff appearances. 31 playoff appearances. Their last Super Bowl appearance was 1975. Zero Super Bowl wins. 31 trips without a Lombardi trophy, okay? It has been 46 years since they made it to a Super Bowl. And then you go 11-0 and in one-score games in the regular season with Kirk Cousins rallying the squad for a league-leading eight fourth-quarter comeback wins. And they couldn't get this one in their first playoff action. Uh, and I'm telling you, like, with this fan base, I would rather be a Bears fan. And I am. I'm from Chicago. But, like, Bear, with, if you're a Bears fan, you're riding through Wild Card Weekend, just eating Giordano's pizza like I was all, you know, watching these games. You know what you're getting. You're not competing. The Vikings, they lure you in. They get you excited. You're wearing chains on the, on the jet airplane on the way home from these games. And they find new ways to let you down. And they have the most thrilling moments, the mini miracles to find. Uh, and it never amounts to anything. And I'm so sorry for Minnesota fans that you have to go through this every year. It's like my parlays. I always get two of three right. Always get one. I would rather just be over 
Oh, for through the fourth quarter, so I'm like, you know what? I blew it. I don't have to worry about this. I'm always waiting for that Devin Singletary touch. It sucks. I'd rather not be in it. It probably says a lot about me and my loser mentality in life. But I just feel for Vikings fans, uh, and I apologize for you guys. And, and better luck in the next 46 years. I don't know what else to say. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of good there. I'm just joking. But I, but I feel for you, Vikings fans, and would love to hear from you. Um, all right, let's get to this uh, Dolphins at Bills situation. 17, 17 was the number of the weekend. 17. If you're at 17, the, things can get really scary. There was an early lead. The Bills then had to grit it out and squeak by, 34-31, uh, over a Dolphin squad that was sans Tua and shorthanded all around. So I give Miami a lot of credit for hanging in there. Third-string quarterback Skylar Thompson. Thompson. They stacked Josh Allen, Josh Allen seven times, three mega turnovers to keep it close and stay in this thing. So I think Dolphins fans, I'm talking to you, you and Coach McDaniel should be incredibly proud of the way the team fought. And ultimately, the Bills were more talented, and it was too much for Miami to keep up with. But they, it's like, did they want to win the game? Do they not want to win the game? Buffalo fans, there's a little relief, but there also has to be equal amounts of concern with these turnovers that just happened too much, two interceptions a lost fumble yesterday. Josh leads the league in interceptions, fumbles, and giveaways this season. Even with the win, this has to be the conversation this week. And I don't want to overreact. I love the Bills. It seems like the team of destiny. The Bills have managed to win eight straight games. You're not taking that away for them. Uh, and the Bengals have a banged up offensive line and the Bills get to play at home. But, the, you know, whether it's the Bengals next week or the Chiefs down the line at Arrowhead, you can't be loose with the ball. And these three teams at the top are so close to each other. They've all got weaknesses. They're imperfect. Maybe not the Chiefs, who knows. But the talent level is through the roof. Turnovers are what will break the Bills season. And Josh Allen knows it. The turnovers, they, they, they hurt us, you know, really let them back in the game. Um, you know, up 17 nothing uh, with chances. Uh, and I give them the ball, you know, two times and give them a touchdown. So uh, it's just things you can't do. Um, and you can't expect to win like that. So some stuff to clean up. They won by threes, wearing the three, of course. What an emotional season, ups and downs. And, and I, I, I so appreciate and recognize this team's resilience. Their ability to bounce back when things were on the verge of absolutely spiraling. Buffalo fans, let's enjoy this win. But we got to clean it up this week if we want to circle the wagons in Arizona. And I think if you're an NFL fan, if you're a fan of anything, then you wouldn't be bummed to see the Buffalo Bills representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. But we'll have more to come uh, on that.